Okay, if there are no objections, I'll now show you how to do the exercises and then we move on to the next part. The first one was very easy. It asked you to calculate the number of days since the Tohoku Oki main shark in days and just use this timestamp here. So this is essentially the timestamp of the earthquake. And now to do this, you have to calculate the time of today, take the difference between both and then convert it to days. And the time of today, as I said before, you get the current time by just calling the object with an empty with nothing in it, minus time. This will be the time since the Tohoku Oki earthquake to now in seconds. But we actually want it in days, so we have to manually convert this. But this is usually a number everyone knows, so it's 68,400 seconds in a day. And then you do this and then you have the time in days. So you see it's already quite a while ago. Okay, the next one is to make a list of 10 UTC daytime objects starting today at 10 with a spacing of 90 minutes. So there are a large variety of possibilities. We're going to create an object called today at 10, just representing today at 10. Um, so it's 2016, 6, uh, 23, 10. Well, I'm not going to bother with time zones now. I'm just going to do it in UTC, but you could just do them with the time zones as well. This is an object representing that particular point in time. Um, then we might just create a list to collect all of these and then we can loop 10 times to add um, 90 seconds, essentially, 90 minutes. So for I in range 10, we will um, append an object here. So we're going to call it today, today at 10 times uh, I times 90 times 60. Okay, so this is always the same. This will loop from 0 to 9 and add either 0 or 90 or 180 minutes to that existing object. At the end, you have a list of 10 objects in this thing, which doesn't work now. Uh, plus, that works. Okay, so here that's at 10 o'clock, 11.30, 13 o'clock, that's 10 of them. Now, you could wrap this in a list comprehension if you want or any other kind, but that's, that's a fairly straightforward and obvious way of doing, of doing it. All right, any questions to this particular exercise? Or if I'm going too fast or too slow, please just raise your hand or do something else. Okay. Well, this one is a bit more complex. It, you have a list of strings and you're supposed to, like you see, they're already sorted in time. And you're supposed to calculate the time in days between each of these and then plot the distribution of the inter-event times. The first thing you have to do is you have to convert all these to UTC datetime objects and then calculate um, the time difference between these, between each other one. Um, so how are we going to do this? So we could, for I, so we're going to, essentially we're going to loop from the first, to the la, like from the second to the last one. You can like do arrange one to length of this. And then we will always take the current one minus the last one. This gives us the time difference between both. Convert them to UTC daytime. And then we have the distribution. So we're just going to call it um, times or whatever. And we're going to append. So we always have to convert to UTC daytime. We take the times area. Now we take the current one okay, minus the last one. And I hope this works. So this just, the, I say here range from one to this. So it skips the first one, okay? I don't start right here, I start right here. Do you have a question? Um, you're, you're losing the times because that's what you use for the... Oh, that's stupid, yeah. Uh, I call it like this difference. Diff, or it's called diff. Oh, that's right here. Okay, now we still have it in seconds. I said we want it in days. So we're going to divide it by 68,400. There's some problem. I see here now we have the difference between this and this is 800 days, which for one and a half years, two years, but more sounds about right. And so we go on to this. Now a list 
of the difference between successive events in days. And now you're supposed to plot a simple histogram. Um, Mapbullip has a histogram function. I'm just going to call that. It's a very basic way of plotting this. Okay, and here you see you know, the histogram. Just you, they happen a bit more regularly, but then sometimes they're also very quiet periods. Okay, I hope this exercise made clear how to work with the time objects because that's what we will need for the rest of the day for almost everything. Okay, any questions to the exercise or the time object itself? Perfect. Then close this notebook. You might want to make sure it's closed. And now we'll move on.